This is the very first upgrade that I have ever given a board game for about three years. I've gone three years without upgrading a single board game, but this game and this particular upgrade, I would say needs it. It definitely needs it. Welcome to another episode of Irresponsible Purchases. Hello friends, I got a really fun video for you today. Either way, I think it's going to be extremely interesting because I first wanna ask all of you, let me know down in the comments below, which board games have you all upgraded? And if you have, let me know why, because that is where the interesting part comes in. Why would you rather upgrade a board game for an amount that is probably gonna allow you to buy another board game too? Because this is like $100 plus. Don't tell my fiance. This is over $100. And this can afford at least two to three more solid games. And instead I chose to allocate that to upgrade Marvel Champions. And when you see the components, you might already have seen them before because it's a really, really popular upgrade. But when you see the components, you, I, I'm hoping that you understand why I decided to. So let's just, let's open the box first. Now first off, like I said, this is from Buy The Same Token. This is not a sponsored video. I purchased this with my own money. I don't remember what I got. I just know that I got a lot. So here are the tokens. I will unwrap them momentarily. But first, everything in the box, we got tokens. We got these beautiful standees, like environmental standees. Ooh, these look so good. All right. We have a one for all of these side schemes. Now here's the main one. Now this is the villain one. Now this I think is for your heroes. Now I haven't played with Ant-Man yet, but I saw them have a giant matte version for Ant-Man. Does Ant-Man come with like a giant card or something? Because I'm interested to know why they have a giant play mat for Ant-Man 2. Um, I have yet to get that character, of course, but I am dying to because I know Mick, I think that's Mick's favorite character from Our Family Plays Games and I'm, I've been dying to order it ever since he mentioned it. Now the bottom also has another peelable layer. Ooh, my goodness, just look at that gloss. There's also these foot pedals, foot pads that also prevent everything from slipping. Oh wow, this thing like full on suctions to the desk. So this is not going anywhere. The worst thing, amplified if you're taking pictures too, if you have everything kind of like composed and as you're playing the game and even cards like standing up and you slightly have like a breath of wind just wafting in the air and it breezes through your components and it just knocks everything down like a domino effect. Oh my God. I can't tell you how many times this happened to me. It is the absolute worst. So I do love how stable this is. It's really nice. That's the hero piece. Let's put everything up in three, two, one. Okay, it like legit got dark by the time I finished taking off all of these layers from all of these components, but I get why, because it's acrylic, and if you ever have purchased anything acrylic before, they always have double layers either side, peeling off front and back. But everything's done, and here is what everything looks like put together. Now we're gonna break this down piece by piece. Now this is the first set, this is the villain set and it comes with the main villain board. See here, so I have claw here in the main slot. You can fit one card here in the central slot and right above it, I think it's used for multiple forms of the villain. Now all of these boards have two magnets in the back and they're decently strong. They're good enough to at least hold everything together. And for the main board, this can actually come separately. I actually got this in the entire set, you can save a little bit. So I have the main villain board piece here and there are slots right on the, on the right side and on the left side, each for damage tokens, which are shown here in red. By the way, these tokens are all separate as well. In these slots, you can put damage tokens, you can put status tokens. Here I have retaliate, I have stunned, but again, all these tokens are all separate, so we'll talk about that in a second. There's also a removable backstand, which is really easy to slot in, and overall, it makes it much easier for storage. Now, that is the main villain piece, and everything else, honestly, the build quality overall is extremely, extremely nice. This acrylic, the only thing I'm worried about is like scratching and stuff, but I don't see why you would be sliding your stands around anyway to begin with. I would see it scratching if I'm playing around with it with photography because then I'm throwing tokens and stuff everywhere. But right now from me just handling it from unboxing, it seems okay. And either way, if there were scratches, 
it would be hidden behind the cards anyway. But right now, the build quality is amazing. The design overall, I love it. Everything's just so thick and premium. And I like that. Now next up, we have the side schemes and the main scheme board. Again, these are all connected by magnet, so you can just kind of pop right off, just like that. And then they will attach just like that. It is extremely seamless. I love how there are no gaps in between each ridge and they're very, very strong. I wouldn't be able to hold like this without it falling for the magnets, but they're strong enough for you to just keep it on the table. And from there, I don't see why you need so many, main uh, so many side schemes unless you're not doing well in the campaign. For Marvel Champions, if you're unfamiliar, when you're playing against the villain, they'll have different side schemes that develop throughout the course of the game. And you ideally don't want many side schemes. So I don't see why they would be this many. Means you're probably about to lose. However, I think it's nice to have more slots and they're also really good for just having minions in general. On top of that, you can track other things at this bottom ridge here. So there is room for tokens that you can just slot in for threat, for acceleration tokens and whatever else you need. If you don't have enough table space, honestly, I think the villain board and the main scheme is probably enough. Or if you're confident in your abilities in playing the game, then maybe all you need is this plus the main scheme plus maybe one side scheme. Okay, now if you look here in general for acrylic, you can actually see my fingerprints on here. On top of that, you can see the scratches that are already formed. I don't think this is from me because I just took the layers off. And honestly, acrylic in general scratches easily. So luckily I use like disposable acrylic when I'm taking like black reflective surface photos for component shots. But for this, it's gonna be covered by the card anyway. For me, it's not, it's not a big deal. You can also take your heroes and flip them to the side when you're using their abilities and it's also easy to take off the card just like that. Now this board also comes with a tracker letting you know whether or not you have used your own hero's ability. This goes in the bottom left corner, slots in nice and neat like that. You can also flip it over when it has now been used and exhausted. And then all of the slots on the bottom and to the left are all for any kind of tokens you need for damage, for retaliate if you're using Black Panther, examples like that. One thing that is absolutely making it for me here is how seamless the tokens are. They just feel so nicely blended in with the player board. Now the last thing I wanna go over are the individual tokens that I got. First up, we have threat because all of these tokens do not come with the boards. They're all separate. So I got a bunch of different separate packs, pretty much like the baseline of what you would need in order to play the game. Now first up, we have our damage tokens. We have ones, flip them over to the other side and we get two. We also have five and 10. Next up, we have the yellow threat markers. Ones and twos again. We also have our acceleration tokens that I showed you earlier. Again, they're also one and two. And the last set of tokens that I got are all these status tokens. Tough in orange is showing the same status on both sides. We have confused. And we also have green stuns. And that is actually my second upgrade to Marvel Champions because I forgot. I also got a wooden insert as well. You might have seen these from you might have seen this from the past videos that I've done on Marvel Champions. But this upgrade, reason why I wanted to do this for Marvel Champions is because not only do I love the game and I think it's worth it for this increasingly massive living card game that's just expanding ever so, but I really can't stand, if you might have been, this is probably obvious from all my videos, but I don't like flat cards. Not only when I play, but when I film too, it's really boring to see cards on flat surfaces. That's our life as a board gamer anyway, but still elevating them really, I feel like really immerses you in the whole experience. You're full on fighting a villain that you can see without having to like look over all the time. Seeing all of this upgraded, elevating the experience, you know, like the whole channel saying, elevating board game visuals, what? Seeing all of this being upgraded and premium and just ready to immerse yourself in the world of Marvel makes me so much more excited to play another round of Marvel Champions. Let me know down in the comments below which villain you want me to face next. I am actually on the Red Skull expansion. So anyone from there, pick one. And the one with the most upvotes will have the next playthrough with the very first ever upgrade for Marvel Champions that I have here in the studio. With that, thank you all so much for joining me on another episode of Tim's Irresponsible Purchases. I'll see you all, actually, I have one more general board game upgrade. You might've seen a little teaser in that in the Dice Tower vlog, but I have a nice little Wormwood product that I just got in, filmed it already. 
and it's either gonna be that video or upgrading the studio space. So a little, little bit of intermission before we get back into some board games again. Anyways, thank you all so much for being here. Catch you all later.